vital importance to you as a healthy man and healthy woman. New regulations gave Washington the ability to shut broadcasters down. Bill Crawford is co-author of Border Radio. One of the first people is a guy named Dr. John R. Brinkley, and he had a station called KFKB, Kansas First, Kansas Best, which was one of the most popular stations in the Midwest. And you know you're sick. You know your prostate's infected and diseased. And you know that unless some relief comes to you, that you're going to be in the undertaker's parlor on the old coal slab being embalmed for a funeral. Uh, Dr. Brinkley had made a fortune doing something he called the goat gland proposition, uh, an early form of Viagra, in which he would take the sliver of the goat gonad and insert it, transplant it into a man's personal equipment. He claimed that it would make any man, the ram, what am, with every lamb. Brinkley did thousands of these quack operations. They were shockingly popular. He built the station at first to entertain recovering patients, waiting to get back on their feet and give their new virility a test drive. He also found it was a great way to advertise all sorts of novel procedures in patent medicines. Federal regulators were falling all over themselves to shut him down. So Dr. Brinkley looked for a place where he could reestablish not only his radio station, but also his medical practice. XRS Villacuña, Coahuila, in the República Mexicana. That means you're listening to XCRF via Cunha, Coahuila, in the Republic of Mexico, your cleared channel station that covers every state in the nation. If he was broadcasting from Mexico, he was beyond the reach of American broadcasting regulation. He could broadcast whatever he wanted to at whatever power he wanted to. And he could sell whatever he wanted to. Bunk medical cures the U.S. government was cracking down on north of the border. Things like expensive crystals that would supposedly dissolve in water to make water more water-like. A man may live without food 40, 60, or even 80 days, but deprive him of water for five or six days and he'll die a horrible death. The best way to give the system the water it needs is to keep a glass handy constantly. Sip it, but sip lots of it. And that's the way to drink crazy water. And they designed antenna figurations uh, which boosted the power of the stations to more than a million watts of effective radiated power. So these stations were enormously powerful. They were so powerful that folks who lived the stations didn't need to pay for electricity because there was so much energy that light bulbs would go on by themselves. Uh, folks near the stations could hear the stations being picked up on barbed wire fences, on bed springs, and even on their dental work. But more importantly, people as far away as the Arctic Circle could hear it almost every night. The core of Dr. Brinkley's programming on the station was music. And this was music that wasn't played by the networks in New York, which looked down their nose at these rural sounds uh, because they saw it as their moral duty to kind of uplift America from out of this kind of uneducated form of entertainment into a more educated, sophisticated environment. The networks needed dozens of small stations to make sure their national message was heard from coast to coast. But Brinkley didn't. His XERF and the other border stations that followed his lead were like networks unto themselves. And while NBC and CBS were making stars of people like Bing Crosby, XERF was making the biggest stars in country. It's on the sunny side, always on the sunny side. The Carter family, the first family of country music, paragons of middle American virtue, owe their careers to thousands of goat testicle operations.